Time to hit the music. Cue it up. Wake up, girls. I said, play the music. Come on, girls. Oh, there you go. Oh. It's Monday. Act like you got it going on, will ya? What's that supposed to mean? It's act like you got it going on for guys. Why are you saying that to me? Don't I look like I have it going on? Well, we're, we have an announcement to make this morning, a very important announcement. Congratulations to one John King for his graduating from Cleary University this past weekend. Got your, you got, even got a Gigo yeah, sticker sure on there. Did. Yeah, I did. Uh, can you wear you, hat over headphones? It's a little, exactly little difficult, but yeah. yeah got look at that. Right, right. You know, it's kind of like Rodney yeah. Dangerfield going back to school. <laughs> <laughs> did you have a hot Shakespeare company? for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. What'd you get your degree in again? Poetry? Some crap. I don't know. All right. Did, oh, do uh, you so move it over that culture, way? Culture change and leadership. Ah, making milk. No, it's see, you start on the right, yes, and then at the end of the and ceremony, once you graduate, you flip, flip it, it to the to left. The, there you go. Right, right from right. And then we all throw our caps in the air like Mary Tyler Moore. The, like no, you don't. just actually, don't care. Actually, don't. actually, when I graduated high school, I threw my tassel. hat in the air. Tassel just hit me in the eye. <laughs> We're gonna have to sue the tassel making company. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Anyway. So yeah, when 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 I graduated high school, mine went up in the air, and I didn't. I it's probably still laying in. Well, not laying in the football field no, this many years later, so, but it's. Uh, it's long gone. Yeah. Didn't go back for that thing. So, uh, but it's a nice hat. Oh, thank you. Did you get a free bowl of soup with that? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. That would have been great. <laughs> well, congratulations. Yes. We're all proud of you. Well, the sure. family there. Did, did anybody write checks like on your No, I didn't. Uh, no, I didn't get. Uh, I, well, no, that's not true. I did get some gifts, but it was very nice. It was very nice. Yeah. But uh, I now want to be called uh, Professor Grand Master Flash King. Grandmaster Flash. Yeah, because I got my master, so Grandmaster oh, Flash. Grandmaster Flash. Yeah. Yes, Master. No, just just Grandmaster. Grandmaster Flash. Grand Flash. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll, let me write that down. Okay. So I don't forget because it's a rather long title. <laughs> right, right. <Okay. laughs> so Dipsy Doodle King, no more Grandmaster. No, 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 no Dipsy Doodle okay. anymore. <laughs> I mean, not to my face at least. I'm sure behind my back, yeah, all the time. Just, just like that. Right. Yeah. 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 Are you going to wear that the whole show? Yeah, why not? All right. You don't think? That, that looks good on you. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the robe? Uh, it's over there. You want me to wear the robe too? What? No, you don't no. have to wear the robe. <laughs> the robe is ridiculous. By the See, way, the robe is ridiculous. What, did, what did you wear underneath the robe? Clothing. Well, I didn't go I commando. Mean, I mean, no, I mean, well, you could have wore a pair of shorts. Well, I mean, many nice people outfit. wore suits and ties, which, yeah. you know, very, and I'm like, I'm not a very formal guy. Hello. And, <laughs> uh, and uh, so I just went, wore a nice polo and, you know, ripped up t shirt and yeah. jeans. Wore my who farted t shirt, flip flops. <laughs> Pull my fingers. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah. So if you just wore flip flops and a pair of boxer shorts, that would have been good. Right, right. Let the air flow. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a breezy morning, you know. <laughs> it was fun. nice, but it was a little, yeah, little, it was a little on the cool yeah. side. Okay. Congratulations. Well, thank you. We're proud of you here on Mike oh, and John Got I'm It Going On. sure you I are. I think the Cougar and Kitty and Cougar, I think they're probably singing a song for you. Yeah. If, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they are. I, I think another person was singing a song for you, too, weren't they? Yeah, they, they did. All right. Well, that's nice. Hey, I want to congratulate... Uh, Kimberly Ann. Oh, you're okay, Kimberly Ann. Yes, I thought you were talking about our big giveaway no, on Friday big, for yeah. Mother's Day. I'm well, sorry. that was, yeah, Kimberly Ann yeah. was the big winner with Kimberly, Kimberly Ann. Yeah. Right. So, congratulations to her. Now, uh, and now I got to find the other winner. Brought the, the, the new, uh, and then you had a trivia last night, which yeah, many people jumped on, even though we're not giving away anything as part of trivia now. Bragging rights is what we're bragging giving away. rights is what we're giving away. Right. You're right. I forgot about the bragging rights. Did you know the answer to the trivia? I question? did not, because you didn't tell me. <laughs> I know. You don't tell me anything anymore. I, you know, I didn't want to overload you with information right, because, right. you know, you're... It was a very busy so weekend. I guess. After you become Grandmaster Flash Grandmaster King. Grandmaster Flash King. Uh, Pamela Piles Libto okay. was the winner. So what was the question again? 15% of people surveyed said this is the first thing they would do if they became the boss. Yeah. The answer? 
go on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> and people be like, oh my God, they are. That's management <laughs> material right there. Style. Clearly, this person. I'm the boss handle thing. Well, this person knows what they're yeah. doing. They're, they're acting but just like a boss. A couple people. <laughs> fire the boss. Well, yeah. if you're the boss, you'd be fired yourself. Right. Uh, fire someone. Fire everyone. With a couple. <laughs> You're all fire! <laughs> Quit. <Yeah. laughs> all right, I made it to the top. I'm done here. So thanks to everybody that yeah. uh, that answered. That was a lot of fun. Uh, we'll try and keep the trivia questions coming just to uh, yeah, to give you stuff to think about. People uh, enjoy it. In the meantime, we've got Gigo News brought to you by Cooper and Binkley Jewelers in downtown Brighton. All right, here's what's going on. All right, now this has to go off. This is... Sorry. Now it's like naked the... news. <laughs> <laughs> Cover head. that up, yeah, will you? All, All right. right. Here's what's going on. As ordered by a local judge, the Livingston County Election Commission approved petition language for Brighton Area Schools trustee John Conley. The commission on Friday complied with an earlier order from Judge Matthew McGivney, who remanded the petition seeking Conley's removal from office back to the commission and ordered it to certify it. With the official approval, petition organizer Sarah Cross said efforts are now underway to collect signatures that will remove both Conley and fellow trustee Bill Trombley whose recall language was already certified. The petition seeking Conley's ouster is based on his language in an email to a former district employee in which he compared a proposed mask mandate to the regime of Adolf Hitler. Trombley's petition alleges he failed to read the board packet prior to the September 27th meeting. Cross says she and other supporters have 60 days from Friday to collect the 5,500 signatures that are needed and then submit them to the election commission. A team of assessors from the Michigan Association of Chiefs of Police will be in Howell next month to examine all aspects of the Livingston County Sheriff's Office policies and procedures, as well as management, operations, and support services. Sheriff Mike Murphy said the verification by the team that the Sheriff's Office meets the Michigan Law Enforcement Accreditation Commission's best practice standards is part of a voluntary process to achieve accreditation. As part of the final on-site assessment, which will take place June 6th, employees and members of the general public are invited to provide comments to the assessment team. They can do so by telephone or email. The Livingston County Sheriff's Office has to comply with 105 standards in order to achieve accredited status. You'll find details on how to provide comments on mikeandjohnpodcast.com. A Livingston County teen was among several Michigan high school students to receive a college scholarship award for their commitment to community. 17-year-old Abby Thomas of Fowlerville, along with Schlock Patel of Rockwood and Sonia Gupta of Rochester Hills, received $5,000 scholarships last week from Community Choice Credit Union for their contributions during the pandemic. Thomas was a high school sophomore when the COVID-19 pandemic shutdown kept her from adequately completing her driver's education training. With so few cars on the road and few places to go, Thomas had to find a way to get in the required number of hours on the road. She solved that dilemma by volunteering at The Torch, the nonprofit organization in Fowlerville that provides food to people in need. She made deliveries with her mother around the Livingston County area. Thomas, a Fowlerville High School senior who plans to study criminal justice at Spring Arbor University, said being able to drive on freeways and back roads, gaining the necessary driving experience while simultaneously helping those in need was a perfect solution. Rhonda Callahan, co-founder of The Torch, told Gigo News that the service Abby and her mother provided made a real difference in such a tough time. And that's what's going on. News has been brought to you by our friends at Cooper and Binkley Jewelers in downtown Brighton. Matter of fact, uh, after the big giveaway on, on uh, Friday, I had a uh, conversation with Barb Binkley, and they would like to do something special for summer with us. Details are coming soon, but if you're in the market for jewelry, Cooper and Binkley Jewelers can take care of you. Commitment to customer service, community involvement, honesty, professionalism, and of course, exquisite merchandise, whether it's something custom or something special from Simon G or Zagani, much like the uh, the necklace we gave away on Saturday for Mom's Day or on uh, Friday for Mother's Day. Cooper and Binkley Jewelers, Main Street in downtown Brighton. Stop and see them today or check out their website, cooperandbinkleyjewelers.com. All right, excellent. All right, we are uh, going to be uh, for our community spotlight uh, today, by the way, which is brought to you by our good friend, you know him, Jerry, Jordan, uh, Jordan, Jordan Genso. Genso. Or, Jerry, or Jerry Genso. <laughs> Jordan. Yeah. Jerry is a long lost cousin yeah, well, of the Jerry. Genso family. <laughs> no, one, no one wants to hang with Jerry. <laughs> uh, of course, Jordan Genso with the Genso team at Remax Platinum. As a community-focused real estate agent, he is once again spending the month of May doing what he has dubbed Main Street May, where each day he'll be using his Facebook page to highlight a different business on Main Street in Brighton, encouraging everyone to take a moment each day to support the businesses that build our community. People who interact with his posts will have a chance to win a $10 gift card 
to that business. And of course, just you can find his page at Jordan Genso Community Servant Community Realtor for your chance to win the gift card. And uh, today we're going to be talking with the Howell Librarian, Holly Ward Lamb. They've got an event coming up here. And uh, I'll do that. I, I know how to operate the phone. Good morning. <laughs> well, good morning. Good morning, Holly. Hey, how are you guys? Hey. We're doing well. Yeah, it's Mike and John from Mike and John got it going on. And uh, you've got something going on at the Howell Carnegie Library coming up uh, May 15th or May 18th. Let's talk about that. That is awesome. Thank you for talking to me this morning, guys. I really appreciate it. Of course. Yeah, we, do, we have a program coming up on Michigan's clean slate laws explained how to clean, how to clear your criminal record. Now, this is based on some legislation that went through uh, Lansing uh, back in 2020. Uh, basically, a, a group of bills called the Clean Slate Package, where uh, residents for certain criminal convictions could have those removed from their record after a period of time under certain circumstances. Yes, that is correct. That is my understanding of all of this, but I am not a trained player. Oh, you're not? Because I had some tickets I was hoping you could fix. <laughs> well, yeah, that was the me. thing. It's like, how how bad, uh, I guess, how how far can it be where it could actually be cleared from your record as far as uh, the, the, the worseness of the crime? I guess I, I'm looking for the right words on this, but, you know, how, how bad severity? can the crime be? Yeah, let's, severity. That's, let's say severity. Yeah. She's a librarian. Yeah, she, she is. Dig deep. Yeah. So, uh, based on my reading alone... Um, there are certain things that you cannot have cleared, and those tend to be violent or right. related to children. Um, but based on the changes in the law, you can have, I think it's up to two felonies. No, now it's up to three felony convictions and an unlimited number of misdemeanors cleared. There apparently are some time or waiting periods between... Um, when the crime was committed and then any um, penalties related to it, um, you know, before you can actually have them expunged from your record. So the most interesting thing I found in my reading is, now I have to find it again, I have all these little notes here to remind me, um, <laughs> relates to marijuana convictions. Right, yeah. Yeah, and... Apparently, there's no limits on how many of those you can have cleared. Well, I imagine with well, the change in the law, exactly. I, can, I can understand exactly. how that how that would be something. Yeah, we, well, that now that the law has changed or the laws have changed a few years ago, that I, I can understand that being expunged. But but you can imagine someone that previously would have been convicted on a felony on, say, a marijuana possession, uh, you know, charge or something like that. Because when you have a felony on your record, I mean, this prevents you from getting credit from getting a job, from housing. And so in the sense that the laws have changed, uh, you know, the expungement process does allow folks to sort of uh, be able to, because I guess, you know, w when you think about it, uh, people have uh, presumably have paid their, their price to society for whatever criminal thing that they've done. Um, they shouldn't have to keep paying for it for the rest of their life. Uh, necessarily yeah. and that this is a way that we can hopefully reintegrate people back in because you want people to be able to get a job and earn credit and get housing so that they can resume their life and not have to fall back uh, presumably into you know what could be a criminal you know behavior yeah exactly it's it's the whole idea that they've paid their debt and you know allow them to move on and you know establish a life and be productive members of society for lack of a better way of saying it um and one of the other things that i did not make the connection before was if you've got some of these um past convictions on your record it's really hard to get a professional license so you know like like we said you you served your time um you paid your debt to society you've gone on you've gotten education you're ready to move up in your career path and these are things that can hold people back. And uh, so the event coming up again called Michigan's Clean Slate Laws Explained How to Clear Your Criminal Record at the Howell Carnegie District Library, May 18th from uh, 6 till 7. You've got a, a local attorney that's helping to walk people through this. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Bill Livingston, who's with the Livingston Law Firm, and he's also the vice president of the Livingston County Bar Association, um, is going to come and explain this, explain the process, and hopefully give people some information to start the process and get some of these things removed from their criminal record. Have you have you had any uh, inquiries uh, regarding coming to this? I'm just kind of curious as to what kind of crowd you're expecting. Um, we never know what kind of crowd yeah. we're going to expect. We're hoping for a good one for him, though. Um, I had a couple questions about whether or not it would be live streamed as well, and yes, it will. Well, the plan so. is if you can't make it in person, you will be able to view the program. We'll live stream it um, on our YouTube channel, and that information, how to find the link, will be available um, on the library's website www.howlibrary.org um, on the calendar under the listing for this specific program. So two options, come in person or watch watch it live. And if you can't come in person or watch it live, you can also watch the recording after the fact. All right. Well, that's a great part yeah. of the service that uh, the Howell Library provides, you know, putting on these various uh, events uh, for, you know, public information and, and providing people you know, the knowledge about different, you know, procedures. Uh, one of the great things that you do there, and I, there's no registration required for this event if you are coming in person. Correct, correct. Um, seating starts 15 minutes before, so show up between, you know, 5.45 and 6 on Wednesday, May 18th in person, and we'll get you a seat and we'll get you some information. All right. That oh, sounds, yeah, sounds uh, sounds really good. And before we let you go, uh, anything else? What, how's everything else going at the library? Things are going really good. You know, we're figuring out what life is going to look like as we're moving, hopefully, to the tail end of this pandemic. And people are coming back. We're still doing the curbside pickup, which people love. I don't see that going away anytime soon. And we're getting geared up for, you know, another summer of programs. All right, well, keep us posted on the things coming, Holly. We appreciate you joining us this morning. And uh, again, that's May 18th at the Howell Carnegie District Library down in uh, Howell. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great day. All right, you too. All right, yeah, interesting stuff. And the cool part is you can watch it virtually or uh, see the recorded version right. afterward, which is really great because uh, you never know. Somebody may not have, have caught the info early on and this way we can Well, and it's interesting that she touched upon the idea that, like, the curbside pickup. And she said that's something they had to do during the pandemic, obviously, but the public has embraced it some. So it's that's something that's going to stay. And I think it's interesting how you see these different businesses or organizations that have adopted these things because of the pandemic, but the public has said, you know what, I like this. And so uh, live streaming meetings... Uh, or events like that. That's another thing, I think, for, for convenience sake. And I find it interesting how many uh, governmental units, I mean, there were some that were kind of on top of even before the pandemic that were regularly streaming and, you know, uh, putting their information, either recording it, putting it online or streaming it or, or whatever it was. And then there were others that were just, they pretended it was 1972 like, I have a camera, I don't know what that is. I kind of like 1972. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, it was six. It was an easier time. This is true. Yeah, what? <laughs> this is true. Um, you were eight. You would have probably been bullying me. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> you would have been picked last for my kickball team, sure. But is that bullying? I don't know. It's just right. picking my friends first. Anyway. So I just, I, I, I would like to see more. Uh, municipalities or units of government kind of step up and do things like what the library is doing, which is why not make it more accessible? Make it, it easier. It should be more accessible, like not less accessible. But can I just check out the book and have it delivered? Yeah. Well, I mean, you, 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 you probably, probably could do that. Yeah. Be, so, you know, uh, what would you call that? Your bookies arrived? Um, like kind of Booker. Booker. Like a, a yeah, Uber, Booker. Like a, like a, not Uber, Uber, but yeah, Booker. 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 Well, <laughs> Richard Geiger was looking for something to do. <laughs> We're brought to you by our friends at Firehouse Doors in Livingston County, serving residents for over the past 24 years, family owned and operated, striving to treat each customer like family. Firehouse Doors, a veteran owned business. Mike served in the United States Air Force, was deployed for Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm. It's been a big part of the uh, Mike and John podcast here, or should I say, Mike and Grandmaster Flash King mm. podcast. That's a lot to put on the sticker. Firehouse <laughs> Doors, your one-stop shop for residential, commercial, and rolling steel overhead door needs for the past 21 years. Yeah. 
Get that straight. Firehouse Doors has been Livingston County's only authorized dealer for CHI overhead doors. Call today, 810-599-7480. And every week we draw a winner for preventative maintenance inspection for your garage door and opener. It includes a 12-point inspection and up to two garage doors and openers. <laughs> Each one of those winners, by the way, is going to be getting the 10 percenter card. That's right. 10 percenter card. 10 TPC. Percenter. 10 percenter here. Yeah. <laughs> did you get a card? Yeah. Huh? Did you get your card? I did not. Well, I'm not a winner. I mean, you He know, said it. Yeah. If you're not a winner, what are you? Neither are you. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're in a basement with me. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. Hard, hardly I'm qualifies. A, I'm an assistant non-winner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. Like they call him on Jeopardy. <laughs> or Alex Trebek used to. <laughs> anyway, we're celebrating National Teachers Month with Howell uh, Education Association. Right. Well, National Teacher Appreciation Week was last week. Of well, course. it's the month though. Yeah. It's well, the, the whole appreciation month. week was last month. Yeah. Or last week. It was last week, but it's a it's a month thing. Well, the Howell Trust Education me. Association. Is celebrating it all month. It's National Teacher Appreciation Month. Don't argue with me. Okay. I officially made it. I'm going to check. See? <laughs> there we go. No, Are you going to check that out on me? Pleasure. Go ahead. Check it out. Yeah. Check it out so, now. Check it out. Come on, Grandmaster Flash well, Why don't you tell them about the Hell Education Association? <laughs> While you're well, checking it out. Grandmaster Flash Yeah. <laughs> We're promoting and celebrating the excellence in the teaching profession with the Howell Education Association expanding on National Teacher Appreciation Week, which of course it's a month now, and highlighting and celebrating excellence in local teaching for the whole month of May. Yes. Did we get approval yet? Just checking. These teachers are being uh, spotlighted this month. <laughs> They've been nominated by their HEA colleagues as examples of teaching excellence. Right. Was I right? I don't know. You gave up. My computer broke. <laughs> It broke. The dog ate it. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Who's our teacher? Brian Reardon is our yeah. teacher today. Yes. Brian is a uh, Spanish teacher at Howell High School. He's also the quiz bowl coach. Ooh, so we'll be maybe he can give us a quiz. We'll see. You know, right? we'll see. He'd be like Uncle, Uncle Bill. Hello. I'm um, sorry. It's Ola, Brian. Hola, Ola. Ola. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Brian Reardon, our teacher. Of course, I say that because he's a Spanish teacher at Howell High School. Also the quiz bowl master <laughs> or coach. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations on your peers nominating you to be in the spotlight with us today. I'm Mike and John. Got it going on. Yeah, it's great. Thank you so much. So the Quiz Bowl team, the varsity team this year, placed seventh in the state, and uh, the team MVP was 11th overall in the state of Michigan. So uh, some great acknowledgement there. Yeah, it was a really great season for us. Um, we went in and were able to uh, win the KLAA championship um, and, and really – pretty kind of dramatic fashion having to win all three games at the final meet which we did and that uh propelled us to the state and we had a great day there playing against some really good teams so explain a little bit for those who may not know about quiz bowl how does that all work so i've always just to kind of explain it as it's like team jeopardy um basically the way most games work is that they start off with what they call a toss-up question and that's open to both sides. That's when we use the buzzers. First team to ring in with the correct answer, one guess per side, um, gets a shot at a three-part bonus. And that's just for usually just for the team that gets the question right. And on those bonus questions, the team can confer with each other and then give an answer to the captain. And we keep score. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of uh, exciting times with trivia. So, yeah, and it's trivia, but, I mean, like, are there different – I mean, how do you pick the subjects? How do you pick the questions? How do those – how are those de derived? So the, the company through which we purchase our questions really does a nice way of job of balancing the topics. So you'll have a lot of things that kids will cover in school, science, math. Um, you'll have history, of course. And then there's some of the things that aren't usually covered in most traditional classes, like uh, like literature, knowing artists or books and their authors, artists and their works, musicians and the composers and whatnot, and even some pop culture. So you might have a question about Haydn, one question, and about Jay Z, the next question. You never know what's going to be coming. Well, that sounds. I no one ever asked me any Jay Z questions when I was in high school. Well, Jay Z wasn't even that's, born. That's when you besides were in high the point. <laughs> <laughs> I've only heard of him. I'm not right. Right. <laughs> You're more familiar with Nelly and Drake. We understand. Mm -hmm. yeah, All right. More <laughs> your speed, right? We understand. Uh, also, now being the uh, the Spanish teacher at Howe High School, um, you know when students. I know that my Spanish career 
as we, as we put it. I, uh, you know, Abran, sus libros, I, I, can, you know I can count to ten. I think I can still do the alphabet, and I think I know, you know, the name for a pencil in the library, El Biblioteca. And um, <laughs> so... Uh, Sierra La Boca. But, but, you know, with all the different, um, with all the different, uh, 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 you know, aids that are out there now to help people with language stuff, you know, uh, the different uh, apps that are out there and things like that that, that kids can use, um, yeah, I just, it seems like it's never been, uh, I don't want to say easier, but more accessible for people to learn another language, like Spanish or, or another language. Do you use any of those things in your, you know, uh, in your class, in your curriculum? Not a whole lot. Um, our department, uh, just a few years ago, started moving towards kind of a more natural approach of uh, teaching the language, where we acquire the language more through stories and through songs and through um, you really just kind of digging into uh, material that the kids can, I can make comprehensible for the kids to understand and start to really build a language system uh, in their brain as opposed to like just memorizing vocab lists and verb conjugations and things like that. Um, so really we're kind of using the language on a daily basis, even from the very first year when the kids walk in, they're hearing Spanish most of the time, they're able to understand it because we have our tricks, our little bag of tricks that we do to help the kids understand it. And, um, it's, it's a much more relaxed and I think it's a lot more fun way of learning the language and it's more sustainable because, you know, kids go, well, I'm not really speaking Spanish after two years. I'm like, well, it's not two years. You're not a, like a two-year-old, you know. A two-year-old probably has 4,000 hours of language, you know, if they're right. learning it growing up. Um, you have like maybe 200 if you're lucky. Right, you're so, talking like five hours a week at, at most, yeah, right? So Exactly. So, yeah. um, uh, you know, it's, it's a process, but really see the kids develop and, and able to use the language uh, pretty much on a regular basis. So moving away from, oh, I'm sorry, but moving away from rote memory into more practical usage and just immersion. Exactly, yeah, and a lot of repetition with things so that it kind of digs into their brain as opposed to just being like, oh, I memorized it for a quiz. And off, it's off into the, you know, the ether. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. my mind. So uh, I'm kind of curious, uh, back when I was in high school so long ago, uh, we had the choices for a language. You could take either Spanish, French, and I think there may have been a German option as well. Is that, where, where are we at with the uh, schools these days? Is that pretty similar? In Howell it is, yeah. yeah. It's, it's pretty much the same in Howell. I mean, there's other places that you know, have added other languages in, but yeah, those are the three we're sticking with. And, and is Spanish the most popular, Brian? <laughs> That's a loaded question. Now, isn't it? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, I, th I thought no, Spanish would be the easier one to learn, actually. But Yeah, I mean, we definitely have like the highest number of students enrolled. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, definitely the, you know, the other programs are doing well as, as, as part of that as well. Now, Spanish, that's one of the Romance languages, isn't it? No, oh, French that, that is more. Is correct. Yeah, no, no, it's, really? yeah, yeah. Spanish is? Not just French. French. Listen, you to you. Pew yeah, over yeah, here. Pew, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I guess if you don't mind, I, I know we're kind of taking you off into left field, but like, explain what the Romance languages are or why they're termed that. Do you, why, why is it that they're called that? I, my understanding is, and, and I'm going to probably be wrong on this, but I think it goes back to the, the, Rome, the word Rome because these are all Latin-based languages. That's so, as good as answer as you know, I would have, would have expected. Have, I, you, have you ever wondered you know, why, like, uh, for example, in the Spanish language, you have your male and female uh, words, and here in the English language, we don't. You know, like yeah. El Baño, La Baña, that kind of thing. I mean, why would... Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, Spanish. Spanish. I mean, I'm very it's, romantic. It's, it goes back to the Latin, and they had their little, you know, very organized language, and they even had a gender called neuter, which always gets the kids' jaws to drop when I talk about that. <laughs> really? <laughs> the neuter part? Well, what, what's a neuter word in, in Spanish? <laughs> I mean, because I'm, I'm looking at, like, you know, the male and female, you know, the feminine and, and uh, male version of words. Yeah, that, that tends to be more like... Um, like thoughts, like, okay. oh, that's a good idea. Okay. Um, you know, we're not talking about, like, the cup or the okay. man or the woman or whatever. It's, it's like, oh, that idea is good. That would be something neuter in uh, Spanish. So something that's not tangible but more of, like, a concept. Yeah, correct. Okay, you got it. conceptual. Hey, learning already. Good thing. Not to bet, not to bet <laughs> well, you know, they don't call me John Master King Flash for, for nothing. <laughs> El Kingo. Yes. <laughs> You know, I don't know if you know, Brian, but I graduated over the weekend and got my master's degree. I... Oh, 
congratulations. Yes, thank you. Thank you. We're all impressed. Yes, thank you. Especially me. Uh, <laughs> well, please, you, please, you're embarrassing me, Brian. Yeah. Don't don't bring that up again. Stop, stop all those accolades. Come on, stop it now. You didn't have to bring it up like that. I, it's really embarrassing. Brian, how did you get into teaching Spanish? I mean, is that when you, when you decided to be a teacher, was that what you decided to do? Or was that or did it just kind of fall in your lap that way? Uh, it, it did kind of fall in my lap. I, I remember back when I was in eighth grade, I, I went to Heartland schools. Um, some of the kids from the high school came over and, and taught us some Spanish, and it just hit me like, this is kind of cool. I can say things, you know, in another language, and people are going to understand it. And, and know, some won't. It really <laughs> stuck to me right then and there, and I, I knew no matter what I was going to do when I left high school that Spanish was going to be a part of it. Oh, very cool. Um, and I originally thought that maybe I was going to go into law, and my kids, all my students here, always laugh. They just crack up when they hear it because I don't think my personality really lends itself to be a lawyer. Um, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here's what we'll have you do, Brian. We'll, we'll see if this is, holds true. Okay. okay. All you have to do in Spanish is say, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> uh, see, you can't handle the truth. Oh, that's funny because that, that's a kind of idiomatic, so give me a second here. Yeah. Right on the you got to do a little translation. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm going to have all my students listening and going, boy, oh boy, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. The D T is AP. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but... Uh, like uh, you could say, like, let me, uh, let me get this right. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still right. here. You got to um, let a process through, find the words. I do. Yeah, it's kind of, I'm sitting here Googling. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's that, what's that service great. you can use where you can, like, books on tape while you're listening? <laughs> help me now. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, you, I guess you can't handle the truth. You say, tu no puedes guardar la verdad, or. Yeah, that would work. We'll take your word for that. Right? Oh, yeah, that was perfect, Teach. Anyway, so well done. That's exactly what You know, here's the thing, Brian. You could have just been like, blah, 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 blah. I would have been like, yep, that's it. <laughs> you nailed it. <laughs> they did. <laughs> well, it's been, it's been a lot of fun chatting with you, Brian. We appreciate you taking time out of your day with us this morning here. Mike and John got it going on. And congratulations once again by being nominated by your, uh, your fellow teachers. Thank you so much, and again, John, congratulations. Well, That's great. Thank you. Do we, do we refer to you now as Master? Uh, it's uh, it's Grandmaster King. Yeah. Grandmaster okay. King. Yeah. Grande yeah. Master. Yeah, that's a good rap name too. I like. That's that. That's well, kind of you know. That's yeah. where you know. That's what he does on the side. That's what I. It's another one of my side gigs. <laughs> he's not here. He's out oh, yeah. rapping. That's a surprise. Yeah. I'm not surprised. You know, maybe he can do a Spanish rap from one of your classes one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brian Reardon, thanks for joining us today. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a great day. All right. We'll be uh, highlighting another teacher tomorrow here on Mike and John. Got it going on. We'll get to our two cent history lesson in just a couple minutes. Hey, I don't know if you saw over the weekend, we uh, posted that uh, uh, Roman's Pool Supplies, our latest sponsor here on Mike and John Got It Going On, uh, joining the Gigo family of sponsors. We, so, they opened my pool last week, and John's is open now. Matter of yeah. fact, Grandmaster's going to go do a cannonball right well, now. <laughs> cannonball! Is the heat on? <laughs> it is not. It's as cold as cold. Yeah, I've been sp true. spending the last couple of days removing the worms. You know oh, about It's always this. the fun part. Yeah, it's like, what the what? All right, that's a whole different yes. story. But, yes, it is. Uh, anyway, we're, we're excited. Yeah, they're we're going to be joining us. Uh, yeah, starting time. next week. So uh, we appreciate that. And um, what else did you, yeah, I, you know, I did my thing over the weekend. What did you do? What did I do? Yeah, what did you do? <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> I watched from afar as you graduated. <laughs> did, did you get a good <laughs> I said, he's graduating. Oh, oh, Cody. oh our uh, little Johnny's growing up. <laughs> let's see. Oh, I tried out my new battery powered lawnmower. Oh, and this one, <laughs> okay. I'm interested to hear <laughs> this because it's it's a whole. I mean, it's it's a different experience, but it's still cutting the so grass. So it's, it's like a plug and charge. No, no, it's a big battery. You really, charge the battery, put the battery. Okay, in, all right. Boom, you go. Okay. So naturally, I did what every guy does: is you really don't read the instructions. Oh no! So how hard can it be? I charge. <laughs> I charge up the battery. <laughs> did my weed whacking and everything else? I come back and okay, the battery's charged. I'm ready to go. Okay, cool. Let's do this. So you know, this time of year, because it's the first cutting. You have certain areas where the grass is this long and other areas where right. it's like that or dirt. So I go, okay, we'll just hit this main flat area here so I can learn how to use this thing. I get, press the start button, grab the, the go and it kicks right in. It's real quiet too. So I'm, I'm going and this thing is hauling. 
I'm like almost running behind the line. So it has like an automatic drive? Yeah, oh yeah, okay. yeah it was a, it's right. self-propelled kind of right, thing. Right, right. And about three or four cuts in, I realized, oh, there's a little lever here. <laughs> you can control the speed. So it doesn't look, it look oh. like I'm sprint cutting. <laughs> Jane, stop <laughs> this crazy thing! Had I read the instructions, I might have known that. No, no, no. Silly me. You learned by doing. Yeah. And experience. that's the most important way. Yeah. Like when we were talking to Brian, the high school teacher, he said they immerse their students right. in the language. You immersed yourself in how to operate this electric <laughs> yeah, mower. This but, is how it's done, people. But that sprint mowing would have been hilarious on YouTube. Look at Mike <laughs> running behind this lawnmower. So, yeah, that was okay. it. Was fun. So, yeah. yeah, cut the lawn, wash the cars, clean the pool, Sounds talk to like, Romans. It was a stuff. great weekend yeah, weather wise. It really so, was. I had to so, enjoy that. So, cool that way. So. All right, we want to thank our friends at uh, Murphy's Family Auto. Of course, uh, you can call them, uh, get your car ready for the summer travel season, 517-552-3040. They're open Saturdays 8 to 1 to uh, uh, be more convenient for you. And if you tell them Mike and John sent you, you'll save 5% off your bill. It's Murphy's Family Auto. Your car knows. MurphysFamilyAuto.com. All right, now, as you know, we've been talking about the uh, Mike and John merch store on yes. our website, MikeAndJohnPodcast.com. Yes. Great news. Yes. We raised, uh, we're giving 100% of the proceeds that would have went to us. We're giving that to the charity of the month. Last month, it was Torch 180. For the month of May, we're helping out our friend Steve Moore. Absolutely. And uh, so we want to make sure that if you uh, purchase anything on the merch store for the month of May, all those proceeds will go to help Steve, who's battling pancreatic cancer. Of course, Steve, a health firefighter and a great friend of the show. And uh, so we want to support him and his efforts. And uh, also highlight, and I think we talked about this a little bit last week, just highlight the fact that, uh, you know, for firefighters especially, the profession, dangerous enough, to, without you know, goes without saying it's a dangerous profession. Uh, one of the... Uh, unheralded uh, dangers is of these cancers when you are on fire scenes and you know there are these combustible materials releasing these toxins into the air over time being at these different fire scenes over time this really becomes a, a real hazard for firefighters um, and something that uh, does need more study and uh, more protection uh, and uh, so we want to make sure that, uh, you know, we highlight uh, his fight against pancreatic cancer. He's had cancer. a hell of a battle yeah. over the past uh, couple of months here. So uh, we want to help out, Steve. So if you buy some of our merch, whatever it is, whether it's a, a mug, travel mug, T-shirt, hoodie, V-neck, you can help out uh, Steve by, by buying one of our, our uh, products. Yeah. And we will make sure the money gets to uh, his recovery fund. Right. You get some good gigo gear and you're helping out Steve as well. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we do that. And then to touch upon what I was just saying about firefighters, uh, you know, there's another event coming up this Saturday. It's a spaghetti dinner at the Putnam Township Hall. Chief Ambergy. Right. And that's going to be uh, uh, assisting retired fire chief Greg Ambergy. He is uh, fighting esophageal cancer. Uh, so, again, just sort of highlighting some of the, um, you know, the, the hidden dangers uh, being in the fire service. So we salute the men and women. Uh, who are in the fire service, have been in the fire service, um, and uh, we want to help out them. So again, that Spaghetti Dinner fundraiser coming up uh, this Saturday from 5.30 till 8 at the Putnam Township Hall. All right, our two cent history lesson for today. Today is, by the way, Lost Sock Memorial Day. <laughs> <coughs> oh, I remember that sock. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you got the other one sitting around. That was my favorite sock. Yeah. It didn't have any holes in it. <laughs> I lost it. <laughs> Moscato Day. Moscato. Wine. Yeah. Originating. From my wife Northwest Moscato. Italy. Because it's sweet. It is. It has a nice sweetness. Like my lightness wife. Lightness and affordability. Mm. Well, it's cheap, cheap sweet wine. It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like my wife. Oh. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> <clears throat> Wouldn't want to be you after the show. Mother's Day's over. <laughs> All right. 1754 on this date, the first newspaper cartoon in America ran. A jab at the government's pressure on territories to join the Union. It was fe uh, featured a divided snake with the words, join or die. Mm. 1754. Yes, Political go. humor. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. Yes. British inventor Joseph Brahm patented... The beer pump handle on this day in 1785. Okay. So. The kegger. You think, it was, you think it was the, the uh, tap? I think the beer keg handle. Or the, was the beer pump handle. You know, if it was uh, the pump. Oh, yeah. It might have been the one where yeah. you had your oily ball. Right. 
I do remember the old. <laughs> I had that little plastic cord out you know, of it. Here's know. the thing, though. <laughs> this is more about ball. my uh, experiences. Yeah. Are, you know, I, I can't think of an only ball without being out. Grand in, party. Well, in oh yeah, place. party. <laughs> that an only and ball? It was always in a field. Yeah. <laughs> So it was in a field or a patch of woods somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where it's the only time yeah. I think I ever accessed an Oli ball. Had to be in the middle of a woods. <laughs> I, did, they, did they even make those anymore? I don't, I don't think so. That was more of an 80s Is Olympia thing. beer even yeah, around I anymore? Know. I don't know. 1899 on this day. And we should have an Oli party. <laughs> Olympia beer wasn't very good, but they had the no, Oli ball. No, but they had the ball. The plastic keg. 1899, my, how far we've come. The push lawnmower was patented on this day. Hey, you the have an electric lawn- mower. I have one, yeah, that I spent yeah. on. Yeah. <clears throat> Buddy of mine actually had one of those old push, you know, with the rotary blades. Push lawnmower, and I was like, you know, they make them now where you can pull stuff. <laughs> 1944, the world's first eye bank opened in New York. An eye bank? An eye bank. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you look at an oil I, I think they still have them. Well, but anyway, okay. yeah, the the first eye bank opened on the stand in 1944. In case, you know, you lost an eye, you knew where you could go. The FDA approved the birth control pill on this day in 1960. <gasps> Setting the stage for the unbridled promiscuity of the 1960s, the sexual revolutions. Or allowing women to control their bodies. But thank God that's yeah, not an gotta, issue these gotta, days. Got to put it that way. <laughs> Ooh, she's on the pill. <laughs> 1962, a laser beam was successfully bounced off the moon for the first time. Look out. It's kind of like a laser pen. <laughs> cats, cats everywhere are going you know, nuts. You know there are Rear. a bunch of nerds at NASA going, okay, we're going to bounce, watch me bounce this off the moon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I'll build something else. 1970. Off your head, nerd! Bruce Springsteen played at Boston's Harvard Square Theater, inspiring Rolling Stone critic John Lando to write, I've seen rock and roll's future, and its name is Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. Therefore, the boss. He was the boss. And finally, it was on the stage. 19, I don't know. Wait, I got more. 1980. No, I don't. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, nope, this is it. 1988. Prince's 10th album, Love Sexy, was released. Some stores refused to sell it due to its nude portrait what? on the cover. What? It's called Love Sexy. Imagine Prince well, doing wait, something who, who racy. Was, who was nude? It wasn't Prince, was it? Love Sexy? I don't know. Yeah. Wasn't, <laughs> He's wasn't, still looking at kegs. <laughs> now he's on the coffee yeah. pots. Well, no, no, no. These are kegs. These That's are not the Oli Ball. No, no, but they don't have those anymore. They have square ones. If you've got an old Oli ball, you've yeah. got something. Yeah. You've got a piece what of it history. Love Sexy? Love Sexy, 1988. Love sexy, 1988. I think it was the uh, one with Hot Thang on it, if I remember right. I'll take a look at the cover here. No, oh, it was yeah. him. Then. Yeah, it was him. No, we, yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't have bought no, that one okay. anyway. I thought it was, you know, it was going to be Apollonia or something. I was like, well. No, it was Prince. Yes. Yeah, I mean, he's nude, but it's not like Well, he's covering seeing, up. I mean, he's not, not seeing his thing. You know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me? His did, he, did he have a name for that too, or was that also unnamed? <laughs> unnamed. <laughs> All right, that's your two cent right. history lesson. I want to thank the Greenhouse in Wald Lake, another one of our sponsors here on Mike and John Got It Going On, your one stop shop for quality, safe, legal, and effective cannabis needs. That's right. And owner Jerry Millen, of course, uh, local, a Heartland Township resident. And uh, he's been involved in Michigan's cannabis community over 15 years as a grower, caregiver, and an advocate. He's hoping to bring his services directly to Brighton and open up a center. And in fact, Jerry will be a guest on tomorrow's show. We'll be talking with Jerry. Uh, and uh, Wednesday, we know there's a big meeting in Brighton to talk about opting into recreational marijuana. And uh, so we'll, uh, you know, Jerry is kind of a laid back guy. He doesn't normally yeah. give his opinion. Uh, we'll, try and, we'll try and draw him out as best we can and see what he really thinks. You got to dig deep into you, the roots of this. You do. So little, he's yeah. a very shy guy. He's, yeah. you know, he just, I don't think we've ever described him as that. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be talking to him tomorrow, of course. And if you've never been to the greenhouse, again, it's Wald Lake and Pontiac Trail. You can stop in, talk to one of their bud tenders. Uh, you know, if you have sleep issues, they can help you with uh, sleep gummies, a wide variety of flavors. Anxiety. And Some people suffer from anxiety no. issues. John gets a little anxious sometimes. Not anymore. <laughs> not, not that I have a, not, not not that I have a master's degree. Yep. Call 833-644-7336 or go to greenhousemi.com. Right. 
So thanks to those folks. All right, it was your turn to plan for the after show. We're going to get to that in just a little bit. Are we though? I think so. I, why was it? My, I think my turn was on Friday. We're going to talk about grad parties. Oh, okay. Because grad parties are coming up this season. That's true. Where's my party? We just went to Aubrey's. Hmm. I mean, it was fine. Did, is Aubrey sponsoring the show? No. no. Did you get, get coupons? <laughs> no. No? No. I even had to pay. <laughs> grad party. He had to pay for his own grad party. That's how things get when you get older, folks, yeah. and you graduate at the age of 56. I had the Fatouche salad. <laughs> Fatouche. <laughs> That's fun to say. Yeah. Like, All right. You know, when you think about it, it's kind of lame. That was my grad party. I went to Aubrey's. Hey, at least you didn't go to the Sizzler. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's too much. It's a step above. Gonna hit the buffet. (laughs) Maybe the Golden Corral. Really big out. (laughs) There you go. Admit it. You can giggle by yourself or with a friend. Close friends. Make friends while get going. All right, we're post show. Yeah, we are. It's for okay. Oh, yeah. Lost my hat here. Yeah. Right. I got it. Saved by a tassel. All right. What do we got? Graduation. Yes. So you've graduated a few times. <laughs> Believe it or not. From high school. Yeah. Specs Howard School did. Broadcast yeah, Arts. Which, by the way, we're both Specs Howard mm-hmm. Broadcast Arts. Groups. My uh, license is right up there in the bulletin. Board. I got mine somewhere. Yeah. Maybe folded my up. On FCC my license, which means yeah. nothing. You don't no. need that here. No. Um, but the good news is for both of us is that, uh, and our fellow Specs Howard grads, is that Lawrence Tech University took over Specs Howard. That's so true. we therefore are Blue Devils now from Lawrence. Tech. We should get honorary Lawrence Tech degrees. We really should. I mean. Sure, we didn't pay tuition to go there. It's That's not the point. We get an honorary degree. Yeah. So, for instance, uh, Saturday at the graduation at Clear University. And and now you're a master yeah. well, of something. Yeah, they called me a master of something before. But. <laughs> Mom, <laughs> I, no! Some of our <laughs> no. some of our viewers are thinking yeah. of something else, John. No, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and, I uh, can't see! Uh, so, for instance, on Saturday at Clear University, uh, they gave an honorary degree to Barbara McQuaid, who's former U.S. attorney. And um, wow, you rate high then. You know, so they I gave her an honorary that. degree. She didn't go to Clary. She didn't pay for any classes. Yeah. So we should get an honorary degree from LTU. Yeah, from Lawrence Tech. So Lawrence Tech, or any of you grads out there, you start pressuring the administration to have Mike. Maybe and John. Mike and John Day. Yeah, Mike and John Day give us an honorary degree. Maybe we could have a special booth at the stadium. Yeah, you're yeah. right. We like could do Mike that. and John booth. Yeah, special seats. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean right. they could sell for high high ticket volume. You know, maybe we could... Um, like the podcast from the bleachers? Nachos for Life. Something like that. At the stadium. And, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> Do they have a stadium? Yeah. Is it outdoor or indoor? Outdoor. Huh. Well, they also have uh, they also have uh, e-games. Cause, stadium, you know, too. Oh, you know, e-game, so, big thing, though. Yeah. 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 Clearly. You know, the kids and like their e-games. Kids and their e-games. You know, before <laughs> we were playing Pog. <laughs> that was our e-game. <laughs> so, Nothing. By the way, on this side, yeah. you're, you're boop, there and I'm here. Boop. Boop. Yeah. Boop, 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 boop. By the way, nothing can identify you more. Or it's interesting when you bring up the concept of an e-game scholarship sure. to people. Just to find, ooh, I thought kids are getting scholarships for video games. Yeah. 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 We'll see you tomorrow. This is kind of a letdown. Oh, you were in charge of it. Well, you had to brag about your graduation, so I want to let everybody down. <laughs>